Good morning. I'm still sleepy a little, but good. Welcome to the Seventh Day Baptist Church of Phoenix. I was thinking this morning, Phoenix, we live out in Apache Junction, and our off street from the freeway is Tomahawk. It's all based on Indian and the Old West. So, if you're ever in the Phoenix area, please stop and visit us. We'd love to have you. All right. Uh, don't forget that the back of your bulletin will have your uh, things that are coming up. And uh, don't forget to pray about our praise and play day, uh, April the 6th. So if you're in town April the 6th, stop and see us. And, of course, then we're going to have a meeting on April the 8th. All right, let's have our prayer. Heavenly Father, you know I'm not a minister. I've never studied or went to school for this. It makes me nervous, but I want your words to come out, not mine. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be with each of us. Open our hearts and our ears, and may we always do everything we do to be to your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We're going to have our first hymn now. What's the name, hmm? What's the name of the hymn? The name of the hymn, I didn't look that up. Victory in Jesus. You coming up, Becky? She sings better than I do. Our scripture reading today is 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your scripture, and thank you for the inheritance that we will get when we perish. But Lord, that is so wonderful to us, and a great hope. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this Sabbath day that we can come together and worship. In Jesus' name. Looking into eternity, I am going to ask that Grace and Roman and Aurora, would you come up here with me? I need your help. Can you tell me what that says? Forever. Do you know what forever is? You think it's going to be the end of the walk? Well, that could be part of it, but forever is forever. It goes on and on and on. Now, you guys can see pretty good. So I have something. I'm going to call this a rope. Can you see the colors on there? There's black, red, black, red, red, and then black. This is me. This is me. This is where I was born. This is where I got baptized, that little red spot. And I gave my heart to Jesus. 
and then I lived some more, and then I got married, and I had children. Then I lived some more, and here, that's when I hit 78 years old. I'm old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, where are we going to tell me? You know what Jesus said about our age? He said three score and 10. A score is 20. 20, 40, 60, and 10 makes 70. So shall the life of a man be. That's what Jesus said. Some of us live to be 100. I want you to take this box and go up to the door. Okay, and I'm going to hang on to it here. So you make sure that that hole is so I can get this up along the side. Open that up. Stand here so that I didn't make it too good. And you take that and go all the way to the door. You just keep going. Okay. Now, I want you to hold right here. And Ronan, you take this and go all the way to the door. Okay? Yeah. You'll see how it unravels. You got it? Okay. Keep going. You know what that is? That's eternity. We're just going to live forever and ever and ever with Jesus. Wouldn't that be great? This might be strange for a sermon, but to me, I remember when I was little and the minister would say, Jay, you come up here and we do something like they're doing something. This is our eternity. Look how far it is. And you see that little spot up there? That's my life. But when Jesus takes us to heaven, we're going to live all this way for eternity. Okay, you can come back. Thank you. Okay, you can come down. Let's put it all on that bench right there. That's eternity. I just love these guys. That little bit of time that we live on this earth, like she was holding there when we got married, then we get old, and it goes so quick. It goes so quick. Thank you for your help. You can go now, and uh, if you're going to go to the, the room and have a good time, thank you for helping. The rope that the children held tells a powerful story. It shows us that our present lifespan is just a tiny fraction compared to the stretches of eternity. And that helps us to realize that there is nothing on earth that is worth eternal life in heaven especially with Jesus. I wanted to show you the bottom of that box. This says forever. Can you see what that is? Time. God eliminates time. We are all set on time. So much for this, so much for that. The sun goes up, the sun goes down. It's all set on time, and he's going to get rid of time. 
We're going to live forever with him. Imagine the traveling we're going to do. Go visiting people, seeing other planets. He says there's other worlds. So it's going to be exciting. What do we know about heaven? John MacArthur says it in this way. Scripture repeatedly makes it clear that heaven is a realm of unsurpassed joy, unfading glory, un, no blemishes, unlimited delights, unlimited pleasure. Nothing about it can be boring or, well, just boring. It will be a perfect existence. We will have unbroken friendship, can't wait to see my grandma again. She just loved me. Life there will never have any sorrow, cares, tears, fears, or pain. I say it's worth anything to be able to live in heaven. Billy Graham used to say, my home is in heaven. I'm just traveling through this world. We all are. And it goes very, very quick. That's why we should all feel, that's the way we all should feel, that we're just visitors here while we're waiting for our departure into heaven. But we're ready. Are we ready? Are we prepared? And when must we be ready? Why? We have to be ready now. Because we don't know when our Lord is going to return to this earth. Christ doesn't know. The angels don't know. And we don't know when he's coming back to end the days. Only God the Father knows. It might be a century from now, a year, or tomorrow. We could fall down and die tomorrow. The next thing we'll know is we'll see Jesus if we love him. But we must be ready for his return. What does that mean? Well, first of all, we've got to accept Jesus as our Savior. What is it like to be ready? We must have our spiritual house in order in the first place. We must sincerely repent of our sins and struggle hard not to commit them again. We must get to know our Savior, to love him, and then do the right way, the best to live like a child of God. You know, Jesus tells us, the scriptures, we can do all things through Christ. He will strengthen us. He doesn't want us committing the same sin over and over and over. It means living with eternity in mind. 1 Peter 4, 7 to 11. But the end of all things is at hand. And that was 2,000 years ago. Therefore, be alert. And be sober-minded so that you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers a multitude of sins. Peter also asked us to offer hospitality, cheerfulness, to use the gifts that God has given us to serve others to speak and serve 
so that God will be praised. And then finally, Peter says, we should be ready to suffer as Christ did. Satan hates us. He hates us. He'd love to see us die before we could say, forgive me. When we're a child of God, we have this purpose. John 10, 28 to 30. I give them eternal life forever. And they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. For my Father has given them to me. And he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snap, snap them from the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. We are assured also, my Father's house has many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And you think about how many people are going to be in heaven and how many mansions that he's preparing for us. It's unbelievable. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. I love that. I'll come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. That's John 14, 23. Can we even begin to imagine when the angels come with him to take us home? That's from the east and to the west. As far as we can see, it'll be God and his angels coming for us. Mm. Mm. We need to pray for our loved ones, our friends, our relations, other people we know, and ourselves. We definitely need to pray for ourselves as well. We have seen that our time on earth is short and we must use it efficiently. When as God's people looking forward to being with Jesus and those who we love, when we have been his faithful servants, this will be the exciting fulfillment of all the hopes and dreams of all of us. Did you know that Jesus had a special wish? Maybe we could say a dream. And you can find it in John 17, 24. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me when I am that where I am that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundations of the earth. We just studied recently that all of us, God knew us before the foundations of the earth also. He knew us before we were in our mom's womb. I pray we keep life clean for Jesus. It's going to be so exciting. And yet there's times I feel unworthy. How could he pick me? I'm just dirt. But he's going to come and take us home. That'll be great, won't it?
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your son, that you were willing to send him for our sins, our messes, and that we can be sons and daughters of you again. Thank you for this Sabbath day that we can worship you and sing songs to you. All these things I ask in your precious son's name, Jesus. Amen. Our final hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. <laughs> <laughs>